the business. Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio right here on ablradio.com. Maurice Garland and Brandon Peters on the remote for a very special guest, man. Like This gentleman is a person, I'm pretty sure titles left him a long time ago, <laughs> man. It don't even feel fair to yeah. call him one thing. It's like he's got, he's got a name where you say his name and that is the title. Yeah. You know, we have none other than the great. Dick Gregory in the building. How are you today, sir? I'm fantastic and getting better. And thank you, thank you, thank you. So, There's I a lot mean, of stuff out there that's going on that few people know about. And the one thing, when black folks get like the Jews in Germany, the Jews never thought they was part of Hitler's stuff. We do. Hmm? Hmm. Same Korean could have shot your daddy's foot off, can come over here now and be on the shop next door to your house, and you can't do that. Right. So all this stuff that we think we, all that. Mm -mm. Harvard University, the number one black institution on the planet. And that's named after a white general, General Harvard, got famous for killing Indian children, and that don't bother us. <laughs> Spellman, named after Rockefeller's mama. Out of all the beautiful, brilliant black women on the planet, we take trash, trash? You know, if you took Nixon's and get it and, and, and looked up his lineage and go back to Babylon, and Nixon ain't never had no money. Take Rockefeller and punch up his lineage and go to the Missouri, Kansas border and stop that. That's Frank and Jesse. When the government went in and killed Jesse, Frank changed the name to Rockefeller. Filthy, trash. And when Nelson thought they was clean, he was governor of New York. Mm -hmm. He decided he would uh, run for president, but his oldest son, Michael, was gay. Back then, that was a no-no. So he sent him on a business trip to New Guinea and let the cannibals eat him. So that's what that's about. No, no. You say that because you don't know. White ain't a color. It's an attitude. Right, And if right. you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, hmm? and this thing we looking at with Trump, Trump, man. They say his money came from his daddy from the building industry. Back in them days, the mob in New York owned the building industry. They killed cops, governors, anybody. It's a game. All right. One thing I've always been amazed in just, you know, watching your interviews or even, you know, seeing what people, I guess, still call like your lectures or maybe your shows or whatnot. It seems like you're like a a walking Google machine. It seems like, you know, we, we got introduced to you as, you know, the comedian that was playing at the Playboy clubs, yep. and then, you know, as the activist, and then as the nutritionist, and now, like, the interview started with you, you know what I'm saying, just dropping, you know, information. I guess, like, when did you arrive at that space where it's like you felt that you had to be the well, person that's like, let me tell children? you what's going on? Do you have any children? No, I don't. Neither one of us do, no. So if you had children, would you make one real smart and another one real stupid? No. Okay, so why do you think we wasn't born with it? You know, if you had a baby two days old and you're talking to your friend in another room, you know how that baby feels. It's about a vibration. Look at my nose. That's the pyramid. And yet some crackers came and told you that the pyramid, but you looking at it every time you look in the mirror, every time you look at another person, that's the pyramid. That's on us. My mama told me Santa Claus was a white boy. That's the mess that raised me. I know it's a God that I could break out of that. You know, this is a game. Santa Claus coming in the ghetto after midnight, too fat to get through a chimney. And my <laughs> mama taught me that. Santa Claus, he never talked to me. Yeah. She thought I was waiting out there for Santa. I tried to get one of them ring deers and cook and eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you brought up uh, Donald Trump, and I know in an interview earlier this year when you was asked uh, what – could we do during this thing? He was like, it's over. It's nothing well, we can do. It ain't your business. Okay. Elaborate yeah. on that. Well, 
This is not your business. This is white folk business. You drive a car? Yes. You got one of them key things you can punch? Yes. That's a toy, man. Me and you can walk from here to New York and California and punch it, and ain't no other car going to open but yours. Right. Huh? Do you understand what you got? But they play it off like it's not. They say Amalasian disappeared. You ever heard of a Greyhound bus disappeared? No. And right now, they and Diego Garcia, they still alive. Okay, that's why I say y'all ain't y'all ain't into nothing. You don't know nothing no more than the Germans. Let the let the Jap the Jews know. Mm. This is a game, man. Yeah, that kind of that kind of reminded me of something that um. Dave Chappelle joked about during his Saturday Night Live monologue where he was he said it in jest it was like a small part but he was just like uh, let's, let's let the white folk figure this out man you, you can just stay out of this. this this is on them I ran for president in 1968 and I said if I won I'd ask for a recount white folk got us in didn't mess let them get it out then call me hmm. you see what it is here right here think about that man right there yeah the richest cat in the world. They got you thinking he poor, and yeah, you buy. Yeah, we're looking at uh, Kim Jong Un from uh, Korea, from North Korea. Now, now watch what they're doing. It's like they found out one day Nappy had cured cancer. Hey, 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 hey! I'm doing the interview, brother. Now I'll, I'll wait till you finish. No, you see me on the mic. And so when you sit and you look, they find out one day, they find out nappy hair. I'll wait till I told it. <laughs> we can edit all that out. It's all good. One day they find out nappy hair cure cancer. Mm. For billions of years, we had nappy hair. And we stupid enough to believe that God made good hair and bad hair. Right. If straight hair God made, then look at all the people in the world got straight hair. We have. So you tell me God made something bad for us? Not at all. We equate the babies. That keeps the sun off of us. Hmm? And so when you stop and think about tungsten, tungsten, 99% of all the tungsten on the planet. In North in, Korea. Not North, Korea. In Korea, so period. Two Koreas till these oh, white folks found you're right. out that they couldn't get in the missile race. They couldn't get in the space race. They couldn't get in radar unless they had tungsten. That's what the war was about. And the war is not over. It's a truce. Mm. A half a million troops on each side is there guarding it. And so when the, we, we went in there, the Chinese went in and the Russians went in because we had it. They couldn't be a player. That's what that's about. Wow. And so you sit and look and they say, well, the, the, the children are starving. Well, they ain't never showed you a picture. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's real. And they have never been able to handle the fact that this thug said, "Well, you know, uh, if the Chinese don't take care of it, that's white supremacy. We will." And North Korea blasted off a missile. Fourteen hours later, said, "Come on, punk, come right. on over here and deal with it." See, the one thing we did for white folks, one thing we did. We told them you can kick the whole world in the butt and get by with it. No, you can kick us in the butt. You kick there, that boy will grab your foot. And mm -hmm. so when you look at the marching and all that, the army, and one thing they haven't been able to lie about, his missiles and stuff, they can't say that they're getting it from another country. Right. They make it, they say, but we're not about to see somebody that don't look white having that type of wisdom. Having that type of knowledge, okay? And that's got to... So you see, that's what happened to the doctor on the plane, the United Airlines. Yeah. They didn't know when they put him off, the world was going to change, okay? And now the richest lawyers, the most powerful lawyers, is having a press conference now. See, we'll handle this here. No, they handled it for $300 million they'll probably settle for. Because if they don't settle for it, we find out it was a terrorist attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here in Atlanta. Okay. The biggest news have happened by planes. One disappeared. This one messed up everything. And so and so and so consequently when you sit and you look at it and see it, then you realize it's it's too late to change this. Yeah. I got the book here. Here's 
Here's what Trump is about. Right here. Right here. That's what's about to happen. This big thing is fixing to hit us. If we didn't have Trump to talk about. This is what we would be talking about. This is what we would be talking about. This picture is 10 years old. This picture now, that's the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. It's the size of a grain of sand now. That's how close this is. It used to travel around this planet once a year, and now it's traveling every day. Wow. Make the circuit. And so when you stop and look at, you know, what it's about, let me, let me show you. Put this out. Yeah. Isn't it here? You know. Mm, now, when you looking at National look Geographic, at yeah. what this is, this is one of the fine economic manga beans <laughs> in the world. <laughs> the Economist, yeah. They broke with, the gay thing with Putin. You got lipstick on. Yeah. Kissing Putin in Europe. You know, see, you up ain't punks like us. They'll put it out there. It's the hottest thing going. On wow. Putin kissing him from behind, both of them naked. And okay. Trump pregnant on and the picture. you sitting here talking this crap like you know, you don't know a damn thing. Well, you, most of us ain't never seen white ain't a colorist attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, you can't have the attitude. I mean, here's a thug pimp, man. If I applied today to get a job collecting garbage in this town, and I get it, they say, yeah, but you can't be efficient till you bring your tax in. And y'all sitting here looking at a thug white boy run for president and don't bring his tax in? Mm. And all y'all too scared, black and white, who you call white, to say if he don't pay his tax, I'm not going to pay mine. Okay, y'all talk all that talk about what you ain't going to do, nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, that's what, that's what we're looking at here. You know, y'all in the in the news business. You in the news business, and it's been happening every day. One point five million black men is missing. All you yep. have to do is Google the New York Times, but you don't know it. And it's an Oregon thing. Oregon harvesting is real for it sure. Is right here. They, got, they got a list of what's your organ. You want a black ankle? <laughs> wow. There it is, right there. And y'all sitting around talking about what you're not going to do. You ain't going to do a damn thing. There it is, right there. That's the list of what a black organ, the reason is black Shit. men, huh? Because a black organ costs a thousand times more than a woman's organ. That's what this is about. Huh? Mm. And they do it every day. Yeah. Okay? And all black folk know how to do is cook pork chops and sweet potatoes. <laughs> you know, pie. But this go on every day, and you don't know it because my mama told me Santa Claus was a white man, and she buying the toys. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. Like Santa Claus, a white man is not scared to come in the ghetto after midnight and come down the chimney. He's too fat to get in. Right. I said, did you believe him, Santa? No, I know she didn't know what she's talking about. I was out there waiting for them to steal one of them ring deers and cook it. <laughs> yeah, I well, know they taste good with potato salad. What is your opinion? And, and we're talking about black people coming up missing, black people being killed in an alarming rate. Uh, the other day we found out that uh, Judge Salam, first Muslim judge in the yeah. country, first African-American woman to be a judge at that level in New York, and 65 years old, and they're saying she committed suicide. Yeah, like, well, they didn't, you act like they just started lying. <laughs> no, they didn't just start That's lying. That's a lie you caught. Yeah. They ain't never been to the moon. Okay? My uncle used to tell me that all the time. Yeah, well, let's let's, let, let's prove it. Not that what you taught it was. If you think I owe you some money, huh? if we go to court, they say, well, prove that you don't owe it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the moon. When they get up there, put American flag flags where it ain't no air on the moon. Okay? You saw the shadows of the pictures. The moon's a dark planet. When you see the light, that's a reflection from the sun. So they play on your ignorance. Right. Huh? When he put that foot down and said, one step, one step for mankind, you see the, the dirt go up and come back. There's no gravity on the moon. 
There's no shadow. The moon is a dark planet. When you look up there and see that, you see any reflection for the sun. But let me show you how easy it is. I get back there. Hold your hand out for a minute. Hold your hand out. Now, Christ was killed on Friday. Mm -hmm. Took him three days to rise. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Easter, Monday, all over the world. <laughs> but Except here it's Easter, Easter and, Sunday. And the only place that plays it right is the White House. The Easter egg roll is Monday. Yeah. Okay, so this what, that's what it's about. So how can you unwind something when you don't know what it is? Right. You know, it's that simple. You so know, when you look at Morris Brown, uh, Dave Identity it was the greatest revolution in the history. Hmm? They was partners. Somebody snitched. They took 16 of them that day and lined them up two blocks from the church. Okay? Uh, uh, somewhere when we stop and think of uh, Juneteenth, that came out that church that they went in there and shot up, and it never happened. You see any ambulances? Mm -hmm. You see them going to interview doctors? <laughs> see how the game works? Definitely. Never happened. Why do you think it is with when we have so much information at the tip of our fingers that people are still ignorant? You born ignorant. That's like me and you sitting around wondering how come he's so stupid he can't have a Rolls Royce. You got to keep stop comparing yourself to fools, huh? Okay. I don't hear you compare yourself to Rockefeller. I don't hear you compare yourself to the scientists, huh? That's your problem. Hmm? They keep running that stuff down. You look at. The greatest black educational institution in the history of black, huh? Harvard University. That's named after white general Howard that got famous for killing Indian children. That's your fault, huh? And so when you sit and look at the black woman college here, the number one black woman college in the world. Spellman. That's named after Rockefeller's mama, huh? Not a black woman. So we just as thuggish as they are. I got a roll Royce, so I'm putting you down because you're driving the Ford. Hmm. Huh? And so this is a game. And somewhere there's a new group of youngsters that's coming through. It's in the night called the Indigo Children. Born with IQs of 200 and go up. Okay? All them white boys out there in Seneca Valley, they go out there broke. In two months, they billionaires. It's uh, the new rhythm. That's what it's about, the new rhythm. And so, so when you stop and think about, you know, where this where this piece is, here. Here we go, here. Open it up and, and tell what you're reading. That's the New York Times article. New York Times article. And what's it say? 1.5 million black men is missing. <laughs> that's in the New York Times. Yeah. Okay? So that's what this is about, man. That's what this is about. The billionaire folk, they don't let their children play football or sports. Who's going to be a fool? You wouldn't let your child run your car into another car playing car ball, but you let them take a body that God made, the real God, and let them play it. Something's inside of you. Okay? Somewhere. I mean, rich folks, man, they got enough money to hire the best sports medical. So they don't like play that, brother fool. These little black girls that's missing in, in, uh, in Washington, D.C., if them was dogs missing, man, it'd be an outlaw. <laughs> dogs. Huh? And then when Biden, with his thug self, said, I don't think the people that voted for Trump is racist. That's because you're a racist punk. But my mama's alive. She'd vote for that thug. Huh? And any time you vote for the lesser of the two evils, huh? you evil. <laughs> That's how Hitler won. Hitler <coughs> won <coughs> the head of that country by 288 votes. <laughs> and then you don't ask yourself a question. World War II, it wasn't but five white countries. So how did it be a world war? It was a food wipeout to balance off the planet. More people died from starvation then died from the war. So I said, we, ain't in the, we don't know nothing. Look, they tell you, monkey, my mama think call me a monkey. Get a monkey and go to the, to take your camera and go out to the zoo. And I'm nine, 10, stand me next to a white boy, 10, nine, and my leg come up to his titty nipples. Black folk got long legs and short bodies. White folk got 
short legs and long bodies. Gorillas have short legs and long bodies. You get 50 black men and 50 white men in a gorilla here, and we get naked. Who got hair over their body? The white boy and the gorilla. Okay, and yet and still, they can tell me that I look like a gorilla got lips thinner than razor blades. But they can convince me that I look like a mo gorilla. We got white women get five and six PhDs in animal stuff and then go down New Guinea and fall in love with a, with a, with a gorilla. <laughs> Mother and father come down for the holidays. And then 30 years later, that gorilla killer. How could they do that? You think he might have wanted some gorilla pussy? <laughs> how could they do it? Are you crazy? And then you look at their codes. King Kong. King Kong stores in New York, Empire State Bill. You know ain't no trees in New York. Lord, no ain't no bananas. What they going to? That's the symbol of Jack Johnson and his white women. So, so that's what that's about. So we don't know nothing. But what he taught us, the black folks be out on the farm picking cotton and cotton day. Before I be a slave, I be buried. They be picking cotton singing that song. <laughs> you can own oh, oh, freedom, you know. This is a game. And the other thing is, we talk about the cotton, Massa. And you know that silly game they just finished playing, the Masters, you don't know what that's about. <laughs> That's why they went crazy when Tiger Wood won it. And that white boy, you know, if you win the Masters, you determine what the, the meal going to be next year. So what he said, fried chicken and collard greens. You know, they killed him in a plane wreck. Yeah, in a plane wreck. Because, because they ain't white, man. Nobody white but a fool. When you think about, you know, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan ain't never had no money. He's a gambling addict. And when it came out, they had to have an investigation. So they had the investigation, and having it, they found out that, uh, what's the one out of Michigan, that was California for so long, the basketball player. He was, he was, he was shaving points. And Phil Johnson, Jackson, he ain't nothing but a gangster out of Chicago. And make anything happen they want to happen, the reason you can't catch him, because the owners don't make the, they got the nets, got magnets in them. In the ball, you see uh, the world, the the the, the uh, Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. The black guy, uh, from, uh, the black guy from uh, uh, North Carolina. Cam Newton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you see him? Didn't you see him drop the ball and didn't even reach to pick it up? Yeah. Did you see they had to stop the game eight times to tighten up the cleats? Because they got something in the grass and something in the keys to make them keep falling. So y'all ain't doing nothing being amused <laughs> like, a, like, like an animal in the zoo. And you know, that's what it is. And so when you stop and think about it, I got the pictures here somewhere where Clinton had the first black that was Secretary of Commerce, Ron Brown. They brought me the bullet hole in his head. They couldn't say they couldn't say I was lying because the people did the autopsy brought it. Hmm? So, so they told us that Ron Brown died on the plane crash. Well, how many times right? have you lied to somebody? Oh, I mean, I know that have the what no, they say. How many times you lied to your girlfriend? Uh, plenty. Or in the back in the day. Yeah, well, how yeah. they can't lie? You're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and we mad. We are scared of Clinton. Clinton ain't killing nobody. He's surrounded by murderers. Yeah. Hmm? Surrounded by murderers. But we scared of who they tell us to be scared of. So and when I went down after he won, they said he won. He ain't won nothing. Now. They said he won. So I was speaking a radio show in, in West Virginia. I said, any of you West Virginia crackers, did you see anybody's inauguration look like you? Hell no. Nah. You see anybody in the, in, 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 the, in the cabinet look like you? But here's, here's what this thing is about. And then when you look at it here. That's how he won. Now, let me say this before you look at it. Now, okay. let me say this. I ran for president in 1968. Right. First black man to run for president. Yeah, now watch this now. Look at that. That's the Wall Street Journal. Uh-huh. See it? Yes. Now, what do the Wall Street Journal say? Election computer goose gives Gregory 9 million votes. Now, had that not ran in that, I wouldn't have known it. <laughs> <laughs> so he don't know he didn't do that. Right. All he know, and they said that the first paragraph said, 
I did 9 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania. Wow. Okay? Now look at the last paragraph at the top up there, what Cronkite said. Which, where we at? At the top, to top right. Yeah, no, right. no, top oh, right, yeah. yeah. CBS anchorman Walter Con- Cronkite, after the errors were pointed out to him, apologized for not questioning the figures. He said any fool should have known that they were out of line. No, so so not, had that not ran, they're running no other paper. Right. But that had that not ran it, I wouldn't have known it. So when you stop and think about how they do it and what they can get by with, because that's what white supremacy, most white folks may never knew what white supremacy is about. Right. They ain't never seen no white folks. Here's, here's a, the cover. I told you Rockefeller had his son killed. Mm-hmm. I went and interviewed the cannibals. Oh, shit. And talk to them. Hmm? Wow. That's what information is about. Not taking that from somebody that held you out of slavery. Hmm? Wow. Y'all talk to me. And, and look, look, at this, look at this headline here. When, 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 when Nelson decided he was going to be run for president, but his oldest son was gay. We yeah. had him nuke in on a business trip by himself. And had the him kill. Was eating. So that's what that's what this whole thing sacrifice. Is. You call it anything you want to call. We always put names to stuff. Look here. Now that guy is Lee Harvey Oswell on the cover of Life, of magazine. Life magazine. At that time, the most powerful magazine in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lee Harvey Oswell didn't kill King. White man can't jump. Harrison. Yeah. His daddy killed. His name was Raoul. Wow. Okay. That's who killed him. So what is information? Well, don't you bullshit until you go get it yourself. Hmm? So this is the question. Because we have a lot of, you know, young listeners and older listeners. How do they differentiate between they don't, what's don't real? People don't plan want our children to do something. No, I'm saying. But no, no, when you, listening, you didn't hear me. Okay, I'm listening. They don't send young folks to war. Okay. Huh? Every time you look around. Billionaires, they ain't young folks. We look for something because we not going to do it. Huh? We call our woman strong and call our car beautiful. Now you understand why a cop ain't never hit a black man's car with a nightstick because what I said, he know I'll kill. Okay, mm. that's what it's about. Okay, so we just sit around listening to all that bullshit and all that stuff. It don't count, man. The same universal God that made the moon and the stars made your hair. And this cracker going to teach you something's wrong with nappy hair. Hmm? I mean, think about that, what they tell us. Okay? A beauty parlor. Hmm? <laughs> Only other woman on the planet go to a beauty parlor, but a black woman in America. You're right about Why? that. Why? They go to hair salons. Yeah. The Vietnamese come over here and open these nail salons, and they sitting there doing your nails, your wife's nail, and they got a mask on, but we don't ask for one. What do you think comes out of this? Something that's going to hurt Shit. North Koreans? <laughs> <laughs> See how stupid it is? That's what it, but you're born with it. You don't have to acquire nothing. You know? Okay. This eyelash, eyebrush has been here for trillions of years, and it ain't never made a mistake and put it at the bottom of my nose. Hmm? My ear ain't never been put where my knee come. But this cracker make me, and they look at the cracker and watch me. Why you say cracker? Well, because I know crackers. I used to work the floods in Mississippi River. Yeah. And redneck cracker ain't no racial slur. Redneck. So we know it pinned that. Out there in that hot weather, I'll get the same thing, but you can't see it because I'm dark. Right. And when you see one of them out there getting ready to have a stroke, the neck turns red. It look like a dried soda cracker. Physiological. It ain't racist. It's facts. Yeah. You know. And so, like, like here's the facts. I go to my Baptist church for communion once a month. White folk go every day to the Catholic church. So who's the sinner? It's that simple. Right. But it makes you think it's something complicated. Hmm? And those of you all listen, uh, Google in 2012. The Bank of Italy suspended all Vatican credit cards around the world. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Look it up. Look it up. Why? They was trafficking little girls. Oh, yeah. Little boys and laundering drug money. 
And so this is the thing. And I, I, I wouldn't tell you if I didn't have a fact because I know I used to be black, you know. And I didn't believe nothing a nigga said. <laughs> They say, well, you're not supposed to say nigga. If I call you a nigga, you get mad. I call you a tree now. You smile. You ain't going to be neither one, so why you take the low ground? Yeah. <laughs> you know? it, and the word nigga, like Uncle Tom, or Tom Boy's a tough girl. Tom Cat's a tough cat. When it comes my turn, they make it weak. Uncle Tom is a shapeshifter. Mm. Yeah. That's why we'll never lose. In Africa, they ain't got nothing in Africa. The real folks out there. I used to hear old black men talking, yeah, man, they, they shape shifter. I know what they're talking about, man. They turn into elephants, turn into anything they want. That's who we are. Okay? A hurricane. Her. It's a woman. Hurricane is the spirit of a black woman. Her spirit. All hurricanes start right there in West Africa where the slaves was put on the yeah. ship, not in the vicinity. Right. All hurricanes stay in the water and follow the same trail the slave ship follow. Wow. Hmm? No slave was offloaded the ship till it got to the Caribbeans. No hurricane jumps above water till it get to the Caribbeans. You hit this country, come all the way up the east coast, all the way to Maine. Maine is as close to Canada as you are to me. Right. But they ain't never had one because they ain't never messed with a sister like we have. That's what it's about, man. It's right there for you because some ignorant slave owner, I mean, how in the hell... Could I do drugs when the great grandson of the slave master is putting it out there? Hmm? You're right. Well, what is that about? So this what PhDs, anything you want, we doing it. Hmm? Right. And then say we smart because who grades me? <laughs> white boy. Right. Grade me. I went all the way through college, man. They'll get that school. They'll name that school after me. I ain't never took a book home. I ain't never read a book. You hmm. hear me? When I went to Southern Illinois University, a black person couldn't do nothing be a janitor. That's all. You couldn't even come in the building and wash the blackboard. Damn. You know? Now, think about this. Janitor. I see him raking leaves in the fall, shoveling snow, and sprinkling trees in the summertime. So black folk came to me and said, Mr. Greg, we got problems. See, the white fraternities and sororities, they, they, they can get the test. So what do you want me to do? Well, you need to tell us what we need. You don't need to do nothing, nigga. Hmm? You see how smart they say I am? Mr. McClutchin. You mean Eddie? Mr. McClutchin, nigga. He got 400 keys hanging out of his back pocket. He got a key to every building. All you got to do is call him Mr. instead of calling him the same thing. White folk call him, you get all the tests. See, that, it's, it's respect. That easy. Ain't got nothing to do with respect. Got nothing to do with respect. They told Jesus, oh, we love you on Thursday and killed him on Friday. Yeah. When you're looking for something, you got it. That's like you going around looking for, if my sister was on welfare, Queen Elizabeth is the richest white woman on the planet. Get them naked. My welfare cousin, sister, got five fingers on each head. Queen Elizabeth got five. I don't know bullshit. Huh? That's, that's a game that they play, and we fit into it. It's yeah. simple. You know, go to war, World War II, and come back bringing the German prisoners back, and the German prisoners could get off. See, how, how, how you know the South ain't nothing. All concentration camps was in the South. <laughs> All of them. So when they bring them back here, the Germans was calling us nigger. Hmm? And what we do? And then one day, Clinton. Kennedy cut off the food stamps in Mississippi. See, the South had no power until World War II. Hmm. And it was that military money. That's what is called the, the, the uh, sunflower politicians. Never had nothing before that. And then so they went to, 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 to uh, Kennedy and said, stop the vote for us. said, how can I do it? said, cut the food stamps. So I picked it up. I picked it up. Don't worry about it. I took care of it. So hmm. I bought seven tons of food every two weeks to Mississippi. Wow. And I don't know how Kathy Hughes got hold to the tape, but she ran it on her show that the two Kennedy boys were saying, Mr. Stop Dick Gravy is giving us a bad name all over the world. 
for. That's the power you have. Mm. That's the power you have. They walk in this hotel now, and we're going to kill all black folk. They're going to have to kill me. Now, y'all will say y'all ain't going to die. I know y'all. I've been, I've been a nigga for 85 years. I know what you'll do. Hmm? But you die if you're a soldier. Yeah. What about my family? Oh, your family? All them niggas went to war during World War II. They didn't ask you about your family. Take that heel. Hmm? <laughs> and so when that turns around and you start seeing things, you know, the sisters, I asked them, how long you going to let the brother say you got good pussy? What is good pussy? Mildred got good pussy. She been, she's on her fifth husband. Four of them niggas didn't think the pussy was that good. <laughs> it's, it's all relative. I used to have that same talk. Some of my friends back in the day were like, everybody say this girl got good pussy, man. But it's like, what does that mean? Like, like we might not like the same thing, bro. Yeah, like, like you know what I'm saying? What is it? No, no. It, it go deeper than that. The word pussy came three trillion years ago. Three billion. A cat called pussycat. That's where it came from. Yeah. You know, just trace back to the source. Ooh, you got a big fine ass. That's where the doo-doo is. I didn't make that. God made that. Same one named the moon and the stars. So how you going to freak over something that God made to hold the doo-doo? When you got a big ass, that means you full of shit. <laughs> See how it works? <laughs> See how it works? In here. In here. Well, because what they had to do to black men, Catholicism, the Catholic Church, you know, paganism, was the black church pagan? They put ism on it, and so they wrote all that stuff. We hear a billion years for white folks, and you gonna tell me a white boy wrote this? But they changed it to profanity. I'll fuck you up. That means you never, woman, never supposed to be on top, because that place that God made to replenish the whole planet, not supposed to be punched. Okay, and they change it and give that stuff to us, and we buy it. Uh, oh, this woman here. This, this, uh, <laughs> see, no, she came in at the right time. Not been punched up. I watch this here now. When you stop and think about what they tell us, the number one drug on this planet is nothing to eat. But what's better for an old Christian to have this high feeling and don't be accused of violating God? Hmm? Okay? But they don't mind it, thou shalt not kill. And they should say, except when a white person tell you go kill that person. Okay? And so when you look at police brutality, why not? Huh? You know what I mean? Thousands of cops it is in America. How come you don't see no white family get on crying about that? That black cop shot my husband in the back 40 times. Why? Because they know white folks ain't going to tolerate it. Well, you're right. Now, here's, here's what you got to see. I call my woman strong and call my car beautiful. That's why one of them crackers ain't never shot your car. They know how you feel about it. You go to their house and get them. <laughs> okay? Brother called me two PhD. They about to repossess my car. Well, my son, don't park in front of the house, nigga. <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> the repo man ain't smart. You going to come by and take my car? <laughs> you ain't got no gun. <laughs> <laughs> and then you drive a car? Yes. <laughs> what kind? A Honda. Then what you pay a month notes? Ah, shit, like two something. And a, a share of stock costs $32. Yeah. One share of stock, you're owner, you ain't a customer no more. You're absolutely okay. right. That's simple it is. Pay one time. And then after you have it three years, you go turn it in. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, I want to, obviously, you know, we Maurice talked about the Playboy Club earlier, and you really being the first black comedian to hit mainstream stage, you paved the way for a lot of guys. And I want to talk about a couple comedians that we just recently lost. First, Charlie Murphy, um, yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's brother. Yeah. What inner what memories and interactions did you did you have I didn't with him? Know him? Really? No, I hung out with entertainers. Hmm. I hung out. Always been in the phone book. Yeah. Never had a bodyguard. Yeah. Black folk made me. Yeah. White folk didn't make me. 
they caught me when I wasn't even funny and listened to me, so I got to be one of the funniest comics to ever live. They pushed me downtown where black folk could come see me. Mm. I didn't do it deliberately. Right. That's my loyalty. I go back. I give money. Everything. That's what this is about. You know? FBI, Hoover sent a telex to the Chicago office to kill their girl. I had to tell ex for what they did. Black folk got all the jobs. Shit, if I want something at your house and you got a maid, all I gotta do is go to her. They love me, man. Mm. Hmm? Not because I'm funny. They just love me the humanist, the whole piece. Bill Cosby. What was that show he had? He was Dr. What? Dr. You ever heard a nigga named Huskable? Never. <laughs> I mean, Never. Stop. You ever heard a white boy named Huskable? That name don't terrorize white folks. Yeah. And it don't make niggas feel bad because we think it's African something. And Heathcliff was a cat. So you that's hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you hear me? Yeah. And so you sit and you look at. So what did they bust Bill for? They loved him, man. Little white children be on his shoulder and come over eating jello out of his eardrums. <laughs> hey, Pop. <laughs> right? They loved him because him and Ed Weinberg was going to buy NBC. If you ain't, if you don't know white supremacy, you can't be a player. Mm. White ain't a color, it's an attitude. And then they killed his son. He went crazy. Yes. Yeah. Of course, that Mercedes, he bought his son, was the only car on the planet that had a reboot in it. All your cars got it now, so we knew he couldn't have had a flat. Mm. Plus, don't be foolish. Who going to stand on the highway cars doing 89 miles to rob somebody? Right. <laughs> you know? And so... So now this stuff they got him on now, what is that about? I mean, think about it. That land he owned in Pennsylvania got more oil than Kuwait. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. But poor folks and ignorant folks, black folks, like gossip. Gossip. Hmm? That's what part of the slave thing is. And they want to compare me to Jews. I'm going to tell you, no, no, no. The Jews been out of slavery 9,000 years. We haven't been out four years. But go back the first four years, the Jews, they actually just like us. Okay. We act like this is something for black folks. Huh? We don't want to talk about the 100 million niggas that jump ship rather than be a slave. Real we just time. wipe that out. But the other ones came over here, whatever you want me to do, boss, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. That's what it's about. So what do you do? You got to wipe all that stuff, and it's hard to wipe something out when you don't know it's there. Yeah, you right about that. Uh, and so when you look at, at the comics, it's called Jonin. Yep. White folk didn't come to see you because they didn't understand it. And I, I, I felt bad after I, I, I hit big, make more money than Frank Sinatra. Listen to a Jewish comic, and I didn't see nothing funny because it was it, it was family stuff, mm. family stuff. Yeah, they was talking to each other. Yeah, and mm. that's the same thing. I mean, you can't find nobody any funnier, man, than some of them black. Not all of them. <laughs> Red Fox in there. Yeah. Uh, woo. And you had Step and Fetch it. Step and Fetch it was the number one pimp in the history of America. Man, and you listen. Know, he was smart the way. Uh, 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 uh. He had a thousand holes, man. He had, I think it was 54 Mercedes. No, not Mercedes, Rolls Royces. And would beat a hole down to the ground right there in California in front of the police. They couldn't touch it. Mm. Okay. So one day, he had a wardrobe boy. He made money than anybody in Hollywood. Why? The white folks would come to see the stereotype, and the black folks would come to see this black person in the most powerful industry in the history of the planet. Okay? So all at once now, he got this wardrobe boy who said, uh, how long you been here? He said, I've been here six months. He said, you like it? Well, I, I think I will. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I'm going to be a big star like you. He said, you have any luck? He said, no, I can't get in to see him. He said, give me that pad. And he wrote a letter to the owners of Metro Golden Mary. He said, what's your name, son? He said, my name is uh, uh, John Wayne. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now he's dead at the end of his stuff. John Wayne Hearn, he's in the free hospital, Cook County. Got on his plane, went there and took him out and put him in Michael Reese. Now his son, 
get to looking at some of his old stuff, got drunk and drove off a cliff. <laughs> you got to pay a price, man. <laughs> you got to Jeez. pay a price. You do. See how it works? Yeah. And, and so consequently, when you look at what it is, you can't get around it. You know, vengeance is mine. And George Washington Carver, he was never around black folks till he went to Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. Tuskegee. And everybody thought he was gay because his high His voice, was. yeah. There's no association with women. And he'd rather for you to know he was gay 110 years ago than know them white folks castrated him so yeah. he couldn't have nothing to do with their daughters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is a game, man. It's a game. <laughs> and Ford would bring millions to him to give to the school. Henry Ford, his brother, he never invented no car. The Duray brothers of Massachusetts invented the car. So he told Ford and he said, it's my research on the plant. See, if you take this back and let your engineers see it, you can make more than one car at a time. That's why mass production all over the world is called the plant. <laughs> he called it the plant. So where you create a way where you can mass produce, you're going to have mass layoffs. So that's what Roosevelt coming to. Yeah. So he invented the WPA. You come in white and dig a hole, and your brother come the night shift and fill it up. <laughs> and say, I works for my money. Oh, do you? <laughs> <coughs> so this is <coughs> what it's about. So how'd he get even? He didn't know he was getting even. If they told him, here's how you can get even. He invented soy. And when you get off this show, go and type up the side effects of soy. Hmm. There's more lung cancer cold from eating soy than smoking cigarettes. Deaths. And one of the reasons I stopped drinking soy milk, because, you know, for a minute, everybody said, like, you drink soy milk, it's healthier, it's healthier. Yeah. And I, I started reading reports about, you know, people, specifically men, saying like how they're, Estrogen levels were going yeah, up, and they were growing the whole, the whole breasts. Stuff, you know, the, 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 uh, the change in the body stuff, you know. And so, yeah, that's, that, that's what it's about. But if he knew that, he wouldn't have done it. The universe, come here, boy, got assignment for you. Hmm? First, it was the plant. That's why we went into a recession. White folks was committing suicide, man, because of his research. And so when you stop and think about it, it's the universe that decides this, not you, you know. And one day when you're sitting at home by yourself, just put one thing on each side of your nose. Do it. Let me see. Boom. Oh, the, the, yeah, now laugh. <laughs> <laughs> now get quiet one day, and you feel their muscles move when you laugh, and it's been some other muscles that create all that heals anything that's wrong. That's why they say laughter is good medicine. They've been saying that for trillions of years, whether well, hospitals or doctors. And the symbol of medicine is a crooked snake with a snake wrapped around it. Yeah, you know how stupid you got to be for that one? Hmm. <laughs> you know, you know. I said, Greg, well, you've been fasting for 40 years. What do your doctor think? I said, he's been dead 10 years. <laughs> right. I wanted to talk about uh, the lady that, that introduced you initially to uh to, to nutrition dr Fulton, i turned her off man they told me where i lived when i was growing up the good food is when what you like don't run out till you get enough and when you don't get enough that's bad food <laughs> so she was the most brilliant church book to the church you know and so uh one day accidentally i ran for mayor of chicago and she said against daily right was over Mm. Ben Daly, you yeah, against the punk, kill anybody. Say, come get me. Mm. If the God that I'm praying to, not that my mother prayed to, right. let you slip through here and get me, <laughs> then I'm in trouble. Yeah. Mm. You want to be rich? Mm. All you got to do is take your check and write your personal check for a billion plus dollars. And as long as you don't take that check to the bank, it's good. 
<laughs> don't, don't, go down, don't go down and get carried away. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Like somebody give you, like I give you a check, and you have no reason to think it won't work. But by the time you get there, I'm dead. So the check ain't no good. No good. It was the good one. So when you write it, then you got to act like a billionaire. Hmm? It's that simple. You act. How you learn your ABCs? You kept repeating. A, B, C, repeating, repeating, repeating. Okay? And so when you just stop and think about here, let me show you something here. This is what they told us in uh, in all the mess happened in Missouri. And then you saw, you saw the picture where he was coming out of that cigar shop. And when he came out of the cigar shop, he had on flip-flops. Mm-hmm. In short pants, 15 minutes later, he landed out there dead with Nikes and long pants. And y'all didn't see that? And you can go back and check it now. Yeah. They ain't worried about you. They ain't worried about you. It's this white boy they worried about burning it down to the ground. He just like his mom and dad, you know, but they don't feel it. Right. You know, they don't right. feel it. And so, so as you sit, the information that goes out there. So, Dr. Fulton, what she said she brought you some salads when yeah, you were running for mayor. Away. Well, daily? You think I'm going to eat some daily? Send me back <laughs> my hotel room now. And, and it's beautiful flowers. And, and bad. I throw it away. I can't give it to the mayor because it might be poison. Yeah. You know? And so, this is what this is about, you know? Damn, and you've had to move like that for years. Well, it don't make no difference. Soldiers. Yeah. I was reading all of your phones listed in the book. What about your children? Oh, they call and say, I'd like to do such and such thing to your mama. They just said my daddy would too. (laughs) 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 You know, know, it's that simple, man. Yeah. Niggas start licking toes and stuff when that fad hit. Cat asked me, I ain't putting no foot in my mouth. And I see this girl, man. Take her shoe off. I said, I don't do no bunions. I don't put no bunion in my mouth. <laughs> oh, you can forget that. <laughs> my mama had bunions. <laughs> Ain't nothing sexy about a bunion. At all. <laughs> At all. Not even the pool <laughs> said, Why do you think they get them cut off? <laughs> yeah. A- a- another guy that was running around in the clubs when you were in the clubs that just passed is Don Rickles. So I know y'all had to have crossed paths oh, at yeah, some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Don Rickles. That was a rhythm to that audience. Yeah. The insult. Mm-hmm. God, I'd go and listen to him. And see, back, you, you, see if you, it was a good show for you to do is go back and do comics, black and white, and you see all of them, the woman was getting the, the butt of the joke. Okay. You know, like, take my wife, please. You know, all that, you know. And then all of us, Hefner brought me in, and the reason... See, laws don't mean nothing. There was an unwritten law that a black comic couldn't work a white nightclub. You could sing, dance, do the buck dance, but you couldn't stand flat-footed and talk because then they know how smart you are. That wasn't a law. Hmm? It stayed that way until Hefner brought me in. You know, and uh, those were titty bars. I didn't know hmm. that me and this guy is gay. And something just don't turn me off, but we want to do it all nicely. We go to look at the, at the titties and, shit <laughs> and go home and wipe each other out. Right. I don't know if Hefner knew, but that one, the Twin Towers, the one they went in and raided in Waco. Yeah. What do twin mean? Two. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so it's a whole thing in a perverted society, you know. I mean, can you imagine? I live in a country, man that would take a flamethrower to another country and burn a house down and kill everybody in it. Hmm. And they're talking about they got rules for war. You can't use poison gas, none of that. There ain't so no rules in war. And so when you stop and think about, you know, where it go, and then all at once it opened it up. Now, it, there is no money. Make a billion dollars. Ed Weinberger, who wrote the Bill Cosby show, Bill made about two billion. He made forty. Yeah. In writing, the writers make the money, you know. And so when you see, if you look at look at uh, uh, Paul Moon, that's a culture thing. He's talking culture, man. Culture, culture, culture. 
you know, and it's funny, you know, because I felt it, you know, my spirit felt it, huh? And so just like the preacher, and Martin Luther King, man, I mean, you know it got to be a God for him to do what he did, because his mom and daddy, they wasn't into that. No. Nah. Why you think King never marched in Atlanta? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that's the whole the, the whole game. Yeah. But there's a thing inside of you that tells you what to do. And if you own a dog or a cat or a parakeet, wherever the redneck slave owners go, that's where you're going. God didn't make no dog for you to determine when they're going to eat, when they're going to get some pussy, when they're going to shit and all that. The same God that made you and me made the animals. Hmm? Now, I cheat. I go out to the zoo and peep at the motherfucker like it don't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's, you know, I was at Michael's house one day and woke up and there was a giraffe looking in the motherfucking window, man. <laughs> Michael, you better come get this thing. I'll be making snakes, chops out of them. <laughs> and Michael, they killed him at 2 o'clock in the morning with a laser. Okay. They tried to blame it on the drugs, well, but the it? lion yeah, again. Why wouldn't it? I mean, two years before they killed him, he was living out of his car, man. They took all his money. Damn. Yeah. Well, what, what, you, you know what I'm saying? That's all we are is the court jester. Hmm? And like this white boy, he's been in that business for 100 years. His children's in it. So they steal them from you from the day they get you. I mean, when I hit it big, Joe Glaze, the biggest agent in the world, gave me a hundred thousand dollars to get your wife a, a house. I said, "Fuck, he gets your mama a house." Hmm. I didn't know I'm just being hip and slick and done. right. Go out there and break a leg. Tell your mama to break her leg. Right. Where that statement come from? Right. When Budapest, when Budapest was the center of gravity. Hmm. The hottest thing you could be in Budapest, loved all over the world, was a ballerina. So if your daughter was the number one ballerina and my daughter was her understudy, they go out there and break your leg because she can't get on. Right. <laughs> but you just listen. Ain't no way in the world you can make that word sound good. Right. Break a leg. <laughs> Eat a dog shit sandwich. Ain't no way you can make that right. sound negative good. Negative is negative. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> hear me? And so when you stop and look at it, and then have fun while you're doing it. You know, that's all. But now they say the pen is mightier than the sword. The pen, you just read the reader. What you got, you read the reader and the non-reader. See how powerful that is? Yeah. There's a book called Chaos. It talks about the, the butterfly park in Peking. While we talking now, the butterfly, that park flapping their wings to turn what the weather pattern is going to be like nine months later in New York. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, well, but they limit us down to the faith thing and just bring our level all the way down. Okay. And so when you when you, you stop it, there's a new group of children. See, we were sitting here to heal the planet. We joined it. Okay. This new group started in 1985. They committed to change it. And the ones born to black families, they end up dead because old black folks don't think children should talk that way. Mm. Okay, so they take them to the doctor and they get that written. All the white boys out there in, in San Diego Valley, San Francisco, they go there broke. Two years, they're billionaires. Those are indigo children. Huh? So that's that's what the whole well, the whole piece is. You do know? you do you still read mm. all the newspapers every week? Well, but about the, thousand dollars and one I don't read if I buy them anyway make somebody think I'm reading don't fuck with Greg <laughs> don't mess with me See, I'm just giving what my folks say then they take it yeah you know, here, here it is right here you know that's, that's a game man see once you get the rhythm two years ago when the when the lottery went up to 1.5 billion dollars had you won it people ain't never heard of you be calling you the next day they didn't change you did Right. <laughs> so that's, that's how it works. You, you're 100% right about that. Um, you have on the, the, the Dr. King memorial hat today, and obviously, you know, you, you did a lot in the civil rights movement. 
Where do you see things now that they try to tell us? It's a lie, but they try to tell us that we're in a post-racial society. But well, anytime you what, got to be validated by the, the children of the ex-slave master, something wrong with you. You're right. You, know, you think Hitler shared anything with the Jews? Okay, so you know, just laugh and keep going. Okay. You know, I mean, anytime you have to be validated, it's wrong anyway. But when you have to be validated by somebody that was, and what we don't know about slavery, them crackers ain't made no money. The two biggest money makers. Do you realize the uh, uh, the cotton gin that processes? New York and London mm -hmm. made more money in one week than slave owners did in the history of their lifetime. Yeah. You know, it's who finished the finished product. You know, that's, that's what it's about. And so when you, you sit and look at what happens, and then the fear. See, every light-complected woman you saw when I was born, that wasn't because the niggas was raping the slave master's wife. <laughs> The slave master was more than my woman. Right. That's what prostitution, prostitution ain't for black folk, huh? Guy on MB, MB, SB, uh, CBS one day heard me. said, what do you mean? It's not just what I said. I came over a slave. She wasn't getting paid, and I wasn't getting paid. The pussy was free. Well, I'm going to get some money to pay for some pussy. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you ever thought about that? Well, and there you have it. And so prostitution is for you. I get the same pussy, just be wet, and she got a pocket full of your money. <laughs> 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 and that's where the word that's where the word honky come from you know yeah, pull up yeah you 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 if you had a big convention here and the top educational scientist was here the prostitutes are 50 miles away so you can't see them they can't get caught so when the brother drive him down there he honked the horn uh honk i'm here <laughs> that is hilarious <laughs> so, and so it's the whole, you know, the whole thing, and now it's fixing to change. All of it's fixing to end. Everybody going. <laughs> Elaborate, I mean, what do you, when you say that, what do you mean? Huh? What do you mean when you say that it's all about to change? That big thing's going to hit us. Oh, yeah. Last yeah. time it did, that was 300 million trillion years, and the only thing that was left was them fish that was way down in the bottom. The movies you see when them other people got them web feet and <laughs> that's what they <laughs> talking about. <laughs> where where gotcha. web foot come from? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's, it's now you you eighty five years old, yeah. still going strong, still out here on man, the road, man. Yeah, what fuels you? Ain't no work. Yeah, but yes, hey, man, my grandfather passed when he was eighty eight. Yeah. And he was nowhere near as active at 88 as he was at 78. But yeah, to but you, it seemed like you're still minute, going. The sun shines just as hard now as it did trillions of years ago. Okay. Okay. That's his fault. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Collard greens. You ain't supposed to cook food. You cook all. If you put one hand in a deep freeze and put the other one in, <clears throat> in a ball of hot water, ain't neither one of them no good. Yeah. Wings, that's the one thing Malcolm said, man, that just tore me apart. All birds got two wings, a left wing and a right wing. And if you hold one, you can't drive a car, you can't comb your hair, you can't do nothing. So any nation that have a left wing and a right wing is going to fall. You know, so that's not normal. It's called a ruptured duck. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so that's what I find memories. Every day you have one, and you limited to one. You living a fucked up life, man. Yeah. I remember what happened to me in 1942. What? You know. So it's just that thing. Everything moves. Well. Right. Moves. The good you take with you, and the bad you, you don't. I mean, right. my wife told me she was pregnant, man. You got you got ten children, ten. several grandchildren. Do, do they put the? Do, do they try to make you listen to any of the music nowadays? I don't listen to none of it. None of it. You don't like nobody, not one person. No, I mean, I listen to opera. Hmm. The billionaires listen to opera. Okay. Ain't no poor people listen to opera. I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> you know, I go to the best all over the world every summer to the concert. I throw flowers up and, and I yell bravo. I don't even know what the fuck bravo means. <laughs> you know. I love it, man. 
And then one day after I hit, I was in uh, San Francisco, and I went to catch the the, uh, the after soon, afternoon opera. Uh-huh. That's the best thing to catch, man, afternoon, you know, the matinee. Ain't no workers there, man. You know, man but uh, the other shit is, but fools. They tired and angry and shit. Just roll that man just. And I always had my little money. Yeah. So see, when I was a little boy, I go get me a season ticket to the St. Louis Philharmonics. Now, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. And white folks loved it. I come in the little raggedy knickers and old funky tennis. I was like their mascot. Yeah, that boy is. Yes. Then they got to asking me about it. I thought, well, I don't know. Just about. What is your, your, your most fond memory? Of I don't have none. Yeah. It used to be pussy. <laughs> it well, used to be. Claps. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. I said, I told my man, I said, man, I don't know if something's happening to me. I don't know. I had some good pussy the other night. It won't stop running. <laughs> <laughs> Mildred, I need to talk with you. I knew you was going to call. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> That is crazy, man. No, we so it's just like a, <laughs> they're gonna take God's money and call it a blue Monday. Nigga, you crazy? You you gonna change the day? Cause you don't feel good, right? That's all. So I'm in I'm in California. And I see this Clementine Patrick. Just happened to be from St. Louis. I go back and back and says, Wow, jeez, what a, oh, Jesus. I said, the, 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 all you do is made poetry. That's all they have for us. Mm. I said, let me ask you something. If you could go to one opera school in the world, where would you go? She said, I'd go to the Zurich International Opera House. I said, now, I just met you tonight, today. Come by my show tonight, and I'll give you my wife's address. And then next week, call me and let me know what it costs for you to go to school. How many days you got to go, six or ten trips home, you know, living quarters, food, and everything. And she called me. I called my wife and said, hey, baby, uh, uh, Clementine's going to call you, whatever it is, double it. Wow. See, she became not the first American, not the first black woman, the first American to sign a contract with the Rome Opera House. Hmm. That's what this shit is about, man. It's just, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, it's good. You just put it in there. Yeah, it's works, good. You know, and so uh, that's all it's about, you know. 100%. And so, shit, when I was, when my first five children, man, I had a kid to the walled office of one of the best hotels in the world. Yeah. And I, I rented the whole floor, $42,000 a day. Just let my girls see. How real people live, so you ready to give them no pussy just for that. You, you know, give some niggas some pussy free if you want to, but don't call this nigga and carry you to a good place. So you hear this, right? Goddamn bathroom, man. I lived on a 400 acre farm. The bathroom looked like it was as big as the farm. <laughs> 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 you know, it's just a game, man. Definitely, definitely. And and, and so we talk about welfare. Ninety eight percent of people ride first class as a write off. So if this mother don't be in fair with tax, they should say anybody ride first class, you can write off what a regular ticket would cost. That and the rest of them. First class be empty, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> All them good hotels and shit, man. When 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 Trump said he went to snoke away and went to the, the hotel in New York, he bought a hamburger, thirty two dollars. Oh man, them you serious, man. I know niggas eat that much chocolate and BB bat. <laughs> you know, see, rich ain't nothing. You are born with it. You are born with it. Nobody tell you you got to go over here. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know. And then when these young white boys start, you know, driving Rolls Royces. See, before that they had chauffeurs, and the reason they have chauffeurs because every every hour you drive a car, your brain process is 10,000 bits of information. Okay. And so these young white boys still wanted to drive, so all the comfort now used to be in the back, now the comforts up front. 
And the worst ride you're going to ever do is sit in the back of a Rolls Royce. There ain't nothing back there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, man. We surely appreciate you, man. It's been an honor. Learned a lot. Yeah, well, thank you, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, I don't know where I got this, you know, but I know black folks listen to me when I went in front of them. Yeah. When they got through, they pushed me all the way downtown where they can't come see me. So that's why I'm in the phone book. That's why I never had a bodyguard, you know. And so, you know, I learned stuff. I didn't know you weren't supposed to pray for something twice. That means you don't think you're going to get it. You pray one time, then you're in a prayer of Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I don't even think about two things. Halloween, the number one selling costume for Halloween in the is the devil's outfit, not Jesus. <laughs> for your little children. Yeah. They named schools after the devil, but not after Jesus. The Duke Red Devil. And the, 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 the Blue Devils, yeah. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Demon Deacons. I've seen demons. Seen de- I ain't never seen both of them together. <laughs> 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 you know? And so it's just that what happened what black folk did for me and my children, man. One of them come and got a sore throat. I don't say wait till your mom get her check. Or I get paid. I want to buy. They don't make bicycles for birthdays or, or little choo-choo trains and shit for Christmas. That's poor shit. Mm. You know, give your mother and dad time to pay for it. Yeah. You know, they just say, well, that's your mama. One of my daughters came in, Michelle. She said, that's a funny-looking Rolls Royce you got. What color you want? Blue. I said, tell your mother to get you one. That evening was there. <laughs> it was, they was driving Rolls Royce when they five years old. See, what people don't know, the law is you cannot drive on a public thoroughfare unless you license or yeah. something. They, they're on the farm. That's when I realized why them white boys get them big trucks. So they start driving tractors when they're four years old. But they want that same feeling. Yeah. You know. And so just, just, just be happy. And, and don't let nothing upset you, you know. And just, just, I'm mad 58 years because I explained to my wife, it ain't about love, can you be lovable? That I'm safe with you and you safe with me. Yeah. And she must have heard me. I was the one need to listen to that shit. As uh, long as I've been mad, my wife had never raised her voice at me or the children as loud as I'm talking now. Mm. You know, that's what happens when you listen, somebody you trust. And respect, and trust, you know. And so, uh, white folk, 98% of my audience is white. Why? Because I'm a genius, whatever that means. They, they named it. Yeah. I go and ask them, what genius mean? I don't know. Well, why, why you got me calling me a genius? <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so it's that whole, the whole thing that is there. If you have any children, love has nothing to do with sex. That's what you have for your child, lovability. And, and, and God is a jealous God. You know 75% of the women get killed in the marriage over jealousy. You tell me that's what God is. I don't want to be with them. Hmm. You know, I talk to God just like I'm talking to a friend. Hey, champ. The fuck you doing up here? I've got my toe off repossessing my motherfucking car. Is you a god or is you not? <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't ask my mama did. I came through that bitch. I didn't come from her. I came from y'all. I was up there minding my business. I was with binoculars looking over to another planet, some bitches kissing one another. <laughs> you know, and then all the ones she said, send him down there. And I'm down here. And I said, man, I was living the good life up there. One of those things is food, didn't have to own nothing. That's why I'm mad now. I'm over in Africa. The God, man, gave me the ground. That's the biggest load I had. That didn't cost nothing, the ground. A warm breeze was my blanket. And wake up in the morning and pick my breakfast off a tree. And you niggas talking about, you know, you owe me something. No, you don't speak for me. You know, before we get around to the reparations and shit, you're going to pay me the real price. I'm over there minding my business, sleeping on the ground, <laughs> wake up, pick my breakfast off a tree, and you come over there and steal me, introduce me to that plus safe weed. That's what you're going to pay for. <laughs> you understand? So it's just, 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 just that. And then you see it, and then 
It's, it's just it's just that tight, but everything is one force. I don't know what the force look like. I don't know if it's a woman or man. I don't even know where it is. So when I pray, I look all around. I'm I'm praying up here. He might be down here, <laughs> you know. So no, it's just uh, it's just fun, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. Much, very much so appreciated, pleasure, man. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, man. Mm-hmm. Give it up, Mr. Dick Gregory. Mr. Dick Gregory. So, obviously, man, we hope y'all got a lot out of this. We know we did. You listen to Day One Radio on ablradio.com, and we will see you next week.